وسلم أما بعد Last we left the story of Musa alayhi salam It was after the confrontation with the magicians that Pharaoh brought to defeat Musa And one thing we didn't say about them that you remember the threat of uh, Fir'aun to them what he had promised that he will do right you may basically kill them, but kill them in a very uh, ferocious, ugly way. I mean, like torture them and torment them because of what they've done. So did he do this or not? Did he do this or not? Now, the Quran doesn't say, right? It just leaves the story after, you know, their reply. It just, they drop off, you know, that you don't know what is really, how was, has happened to them. So did Allah Azza Jal save them? Did actually... Were they killed as Pharaoh promised? And the likely scenario is that actually they were killed as Pharaoh promised. Because absent something miraculous that Allah would tell us about in the Quran, actually he had the power and the means to do all of this. And then we assume that he actually did that. Uh, that he actually punished them and he killed them. But they stood their grounds and they did not you know, go back on uh, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we saw how Allah Azza wa kept sending Pharaoh and his people one sign after the other. And that each sign was bigger, bigger than the one previous to it. So Allah Azza wa sent as sinin wa naqs min al-thamarat. Drought and famine and also decrease in crops. And then whenever something would happen, bad would happen, they would attribute this to Musa. Or oh, this is because of you and your people and your call uh, and, your, and your claim that you're on behalf of God. This is because of you. But if something good happens, it says it's because of us. Uh, you are bad luck. You brought this to us. Otherwise, we deserve better. And then that Allah also sent them other signs. And Allah talks about at tufan So this is the flood. Uh, a lot of water that would you know, overtake the land. Well, Al-Jarad, the locust, Al-Qummal, the lice, wal the frogs, and the dam, the blood. And that each of these signs, it would come only to Pharaoh and his people. Would it touch Banu Israel? It wouldn't touch them. And then if they wanted relief from it, who is the only one that they can go to? Musa alayhi salam. And every time they make the same promise. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal, your Lord, the one who had sent you to take this away and we will believe in you and send Banu Israel with you. Release them. No longer enslave them. But once that is granted, they go back on their promise and they disbelieve in Allah, continue to disbelieve in Allah and they continue to enslave Banu Israel. So, then we move on and this is in Surah Yunus where Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَمَا آمَنَ لِمُوسَىٰ إِلَّا ذُرِّيَّةٌ مِّن قَوْمِهِ Allah says, So no one believed in Musa except a dhurriyah. Dhurriyah are the children, meaning young people. Mean qawmihi, from his people. Ala khawf, with fear that Pharaoh and the strong people around him will persecute them. So here Allah Azza is saying that only few and few who among the progeny of his people believed in Musa alayhi salam with the fear that Pharaoh and his people will go after them. Now here the question here is, which people is Allah Azza wa referring to in the Quran? Is he referring to the people of Pharaoh or is he referring to Banu Israel? Qawmihi. Is it in reference to this or reference to that? You'd find that the Mufassirun, the people of Tafsir, they actually split on this. So some say, no, this is in reference to Banu Israel. Meaning that only the progeny, meaning the young from Banu Israel, are the ones who believed in Musa alayhi salam, fearing that because of that belief, Pharaoh will go after them. So that is one Mufassirun, or you know, a group of people of Tafsir, they said that. Because the sequence and how the ayah is constructed suggests this. Ibn Kathir says otherwise. Ibn Kathir says, no, Banu Israel, all of them believed in Musa. It's not only the young. So what this ayah is actually referring to is that only few, and these happen to be among the young from the people of Pharaoh. 
believed in Musa. So only few, and they are the young ones from among the people of Pharaoh, believed in Musa alayhi salam, fearing that if they are found out and discovered, that Pharaoh will punish them. So it's either this or either that. But one benefit from this ayah is that Allah Azza wa when he says the Riyah says the young, the young believed. And why is it the young specifically? Hmm? Yeah, their minds are more open. Huh? And they're less entrenched in their ways. Meaning if a person is older, as you get older, you get more and more used to things and entrenched in one particular way of doing things. Whereas if you're young, you're still open to other possibilities. So if a person, if he is young, and that's something to take advantage of because it could be good or it could be what? Bad. So if you are young, you're actually open, but at the same time vulnerable to the bad ideas as well. So the person needs to protect himself when he is young and take advantage of the fact when you are young to get more of what Allah Azza wa wants. Because if you get it when you are young, you're likely, inshallah, to continue with that as you get older and older. So then Allah Azza wa Jal says that Musa said to his people, Qala ya qawmi in kuntum amantum billah, ya oh my people, if you have iman in Allah, then rely upon him if you are Muslimin. Qalu ala Allahi tawakkilna. So Musa alayhi salam, and this should be remembered throughout whenever a person is facing an adversity, a problem that sometimes seems bigger than you, that don't trust or put most or all of your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. Because for Banu Israel, and that is perhaps why Allah Azza wa Jal had put them in such uh, difficulty, is to extract from them reliance and complete reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal. So it's not your own power or intelligence or planning or what you can do or that somebody else can help you. So Allah, Musa says, فَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلُوا Meaning rely upon Allah and Allah alone because he's the only one who can help you in the face of the tyranny of Pharaoh if you are Muslims. So they said, عَلَى اللَّهِ تَوَكَّلْنَا Oh Allah, on you we put our most trust and we expect help from. رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِلْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Ya Allah, do not make us a fitna for the aggressors. And how can you be a fitna for the aggressor? They say that if the aggressor, if you are a believer, you are supposed to be championed by Allah Azza wa Jal, and the aggressors, transgressors, they gain power over you, then they will say, if they were on the truth, they will be defended. They must not be. So that will be a fitna for them. So if they have power over you, they will begin to doubt your religion. So Ya Allah, do not make us a fitna that we are defeated and because of that they think that what we follow is wrong. Or if we deviate and we become also a fitna for them. So I says, Ya Allah, do not make us a fitna for the aggressors. وَنَجِّنَا بِرَحْمَتِكَ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ and save us from the non-believers and then Allah Azza wa Jal reveals to Musa alayhi salam and to his brother أَن تَبَوَّأَ لِقَوْمِكُمَا بِمِصْرَ بُيُوتَ وَجْعَلُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ قِبْلَ He says, take or adopt for yourselves, for your people, homes in Egypt and make your homes a qibla, meaning a masjid, a place of worship. So some scholars said, you know, that this is a command from Allah Azza wa Jal to establish places of worship because they were not allowed. Or to move from their homes to other homes in preparation for their final departure. Meaning move from where you live to some other places. Move from your homes to other homes. And you are not allowed to pray in public. So pray in your homes. So make your homes qibla, meaning make them a masjid. وَبَشِّرْ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And give glad tidings to people of Iman. And then Musa alayhi salam has this dua. قَالَ مُوسَى رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ أَتَيْتَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَأَهُ زِينَةً وَأَمْوَالًا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا رَبَّنَا لِيُضِلُّ عَنْ سَبِيلِكَ He says, Musa prays to Allah Azza wa Jal. He says, Ya Allah, you've gave, you've gave Pharaoh and his elites زِينَةً وَأَمْوَالًا Beauty, luxury, the beauty of this life and wealth. في الحياة الدنيا in this life ربنا ليضلوا عن سبيلك oh our Lord they used it to misguide people 
Meaning, Rabbana liyudillu, meaning you've been given, they've been given this and they used it eventually to do what? To misguide people. So the ni'mah that you've given them, has it been used right? No. Had been abused and used against Allah, not for Allah, against Allah Azza wa Jal. So the, he says, رَبَّنَا اطْمِسْ عَلَىٰ أَمْوَالِهِمْ وَاشْدُدْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ فَلَا يُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى يَرَوُوا الْعَذَابَ الْأَلِيمِ he says, Ya Allah, eviscerate their wealth. Huh? Destroy their wealth. Utmis ala amwalihim. Washdud ala qulubihim and harden their hearts. So they do not see or they do not accept iman until they see the severe punishment. So this is a strong dua, isn't it? From Musa alayhi salam. And it tells you about his frustration with them. This is a dua that did not come after one year of da'wah or two years of da'wah, or three years of da'wah, we're talking, wallahu a'lam, as some have said, decades. Yani, all that we've mentioned, all the ayat, one ayah after the other, the conversations with Musa, with Pharaoh, back and forth, back and forth, how, what, how long did that take? We're talking about years and years and years. Huh? Decades, they say 20 years. Musa alayhi salam is trying with Pharaoh and his people. We don't know the exact time, but just to give you an idea, that imagine him, um, talking to Pharaoh and sending him ayat for 20 years and Banu Israel being punished and persecuted for how many? 20 years. Just to give you a perspective of how much they actually had to endure. So then eventually Musa alayhi salam with his frustration he says that. He prays that. And Allah Azza wa says Qala qad He says your supplication has been answered فَاسْتَقِيمَ وَلَا تَتَّبِعَانِّي سَبِيلَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ he says, so your, your dua had been, has been accepted. So walk the straight path. These people are not going to believe, right? So walk the straight path and do not follow the path of those who do not know. Now, subhanallah, Musa alayhi salam, or the dua of Musa alayhi salam, would not have been accepted if Allah azza wa did not know that they deserved it. Like if you, you know, have a, a thought or, you know, or question, how could Musa alayhi salam make such a dua? How could Allah accept it? He say, why did Allah accept that dua? Because he knew that what? There is no good that is left in them. There is no good that is left in them. Had Allah known that they would accept Islam, that there is good left in them, he would not accept that dua. Right? Such as with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at one time when some people killed some Muslims and he was making dua against them, what did Allah Azza wa Jal say? لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٍ أَوْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَوْ يُعَذِّبَهُمْ He says, the matter is not eventually up to you. He could forgive them or he could punish them. So the Prophet ﷺ stopped making dua against them and they actually accepted Islam later. So if there is good in them, Allah would not accept that dua. But Musa realized and Allah confirmed it. That is it for them. If they've been given chance after chance after chance, they're not going to accept Islam anymore. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, now there's nothing left. There's nothing left except that separation. For Allah Azza wa Jal to save Banu Israel and to destroy Pharaoh and his soldiers. Then Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَسْرِي بِعِبَادِي فَاضْرِبْ لَهُمْ طَرِيقًا فِي الْبَحْرِ يَبَسَ لَا تَخَافُ دَرَكَ وَلَا تَخْشَىٰ It says, we have revealed to Musa, أَنْ أَسْرِي بِعِبَادِي Meaning, walk out at night. So, Isra is what? Night journey, right? Right, night travel. So, walk and leave out at night. And وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ طَرِيقًا فِي الْبَحْرِ يَبَسَىٰ Strike for them. He's going to strike it with his staff. Strike for them. طَرِيقًا فِي الْبَحْرِ A path in the sea or a path in the water. يَبَسَ Dry. لَا تَخَافُوا دَرَكَ You're not going to be, do not fear that they will catch you or have no fear at all. لَا تَخَافُوا دَرَكَ وَلَا تَخْشَ Don't fear the waters, don't fear that they will catch you. You will be safe. So Musa alayhi salam did that and he told Banu Israel, at night they snuck out. Fir'aun and his soldiers and his people, they didn't know. We had few believers, few believers from the people of Pharaoh. But in the midst of all of it, they did not count much. So most of, Pharaoh, most of the people of Pharaoh are non-believers. So they did not know about the movement of Banu Israel. 
So they said that when they woke up and they looked, where are Banu Israel? Say they left. So Fir'aun got very upset. And he called his soldiers from everywhere. And that he was telling them that these are people, they just are a small number of people. And we are very angry with them. Uh, we are very angry with them, meaning that we should go after that we should go after them. And we also fear them in a sense. Hmm? That we should be cautious and not let them leave because you don't know what they will do. They should be under our control. So they are few, but we should be cautious enough not to let them leave. So they went after them. And Allah Azza wa Jal said that they did that mushriqeen, meaning in the morning, when they realized, woke up, realized that they were not around, so in the morning they went after them. So Banu Israel don't, are not armed, and they are running with their lives, trying to escape. Pharaoh and his soldiers armed to the teeth, and now they are after them. So Banu Israel, they reach the water. And when they reach the water, they note that Pharaoh and his soldiers are approaching from the back. Allah describes that scene. So when they saw each other, those two big groups, they saw each other, the people of Musa said, Inna la mudrakun, we're gonna be seized, we're gonna be caught. That is it, because now they are trapped. There is water, and the soldiers are what? Are in the back. So now we are trapped. Then Musa says what? Kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdin. He says, no. Indeed, Allah is with me. Inna ma'iya Rabbi, my creator, my sustainer, the, the provider is with me and he will guide me. That there will be a way out of this. Because who brought me, who commanded me to come out? Allah Azza wa Jal. So, when Allah asks you to do something and sometimes the road seems blocked, just like Musa. Where, is, where, where am I going to go? It's just water. If we go inside, we're going to drown. If we stay, we're killed or seized and taken back. Where are we going to go? So you know that Allah will guide. That somehow, if you believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah will guide. Now maybe Musa knew then, before Allah, Allah had revealed it before, that you're going to walk, huh? Huh? on, you know, dry land, when the sea or when the water splits. Maybe he knew this. Or maybe till that moment he did not know. But he just believed that Allah Azza wa is going to give them an exit. So this is the difference between a person who believes and a person who doubts Allah Azza wa A person who doubts Allah will not see this. The sea or the water will not split for them. You understand? I'm, I'm talking metaphorically, right? The sea is not going to split for them. They're not going to see... Um, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal coming to their rescue because they don't expect it. They don't want it. They, don't, they doubt it. But a person who has faith, who has belief that Allah will help them, yes, they will see Allah's help. فَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَىٰ أَنْ يَضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْبَحْرِ فَانْفَلَقَ فَكَانَ كُلُّ فِرْقٍ كَالطَّوْضِ الْعَظِيمِ وَأَزَفْنَا ثَمَّ الْآخَرِينَ So Allah says, then we revealed to Musa alayhi salam, أَنْ يَضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْبَحْرِ so take this staff of yours, the staff, the same staff that performed a miracle before Musa, before Pharaoh, take that one huh? and strike the water with it and the water will split and walk. فنفلق. It says it's split. Each side of the water, when it's split, it's like a huge mountain. So can you imagine with me the scene as the water parts and the water now is forming these huge mountains of water. And Banu Israel, they could see this. The land now is dry. Absolutely, they can walk on it. And they could see water to the right and water to the left. And they're walking. وَأَزْلَفْنَا ثَمَّ الْآخَرِينَ And mean that, means that Allah Azza wa says, and we brought Pharaoh close also. So right at the heels of Banu Israel, Pharaoh was there with his soldiers. And they went after them. And then Allah Azza wa says, أَتْبَعَهُمْ فِرْعَوْنُ وَجُنُودُهُ بَغْيًا وَعَدْوَىٰ Pharaoh and his soldiers. And I told you before, if there were no soldiers, there would be no Pharaoh. So what, what's the fault of the soldiers of Pharaoh? Is that they listened. 
So they are also aggressors. Huh? They are people of uh, aggression. So they followed them. Fir'aun, Pharaoh and his soldiers, they followed them. بَغِيًا وَعَدْوَىٰ You know, and unjustly. حَتَّى إِذَا أَدْرَكَهُ الْغَرَقُ And this is talking about Pharaoh. Meaning that Allah Azza wa Jal, when the last person from Banu Israel left the water, Allah Azza wa Jal asked these mountains of water to go back and collapse on Pharaoh and his soldiers, to drown all of them. And Allah describes that scene, when Pharaoh was about to drown, He says, I believe that there is no one to be worshipped except the one whom Banu Israel had believed in, وَأَنَا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And I am of the Muslims. So he believed. He, at that moment, finally had revealed what has always been the truth inside his heart. Remember that we said before that Musa alayhi salam tells Pharaoh, you know that these signs are from Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah says, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا So Allah Azza wa says, you know, they have rejected it, meaning publicly, but their hearts are sure that this is from Allah. So Pharaoh inside, did he believe? Aha. Uh -huh. So it's not enough for you just to say, I, I know Allah is there, but you have to follow Allah Azza wa You have to submit to Allah. Pharaoh did not submit, did not want to submit. And that time, he says, I believe in the ilah of Banu Israel wa ana minal muslimin. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, Al-ana wa qad asayta qablu wa kunta minal mufsidin. Now that you are accepting it. Wa qad asayta and before you were a sinner, a big sinner. And you were of the corruptors. That is, is this the time to accept Islam and to come back to Allah Azza wa Jal? So a person, if he asks, why, isn't it, why is it that Allah did not accept this from Pharaoh? Because Pharaoh, the statement of Pharaoh is what? I believe. Why didn't Allah accept it from Pharaoh? Because it's too late. It is too late. When a person sees Allah's punishment coming, it is too late for them to accept Allah Azza wa Jal. When they see the angels of Allah coming with punishment, it is too late for them to accept Allah. Uh, Islam. When their soul is being taken out, hmm? that is it. In Allah yaqbalu tawbat al abdi ma lam yugarqir, kama qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that a person, Allah will accept his repentance as long as he is not on his deathbed, meaning that his soul is exiting his body. Up until, before that, yes, you can, you can repent. But when you are about to die and then you repent, then Allah says, it is too late. It is too late. And then Allah says, فَالْيَوْمَ نُنَجِّيكَ بِبَدَنِكَ لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ عَنْ آيَاتِنَا لِغَافِلُونَ He says, and so now we save your body. Save your body. So that you will be an ayah for those who come afterwards. They say in the tafsir, what does it mean? نُنَجِّيكَ بِبَدَنِكَ لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً What is it that we save your body so that you will be an ayah for those who come after? They say that Banu Israel, they didn't believe that when Pharaoh drowned, just to tell you the might of Pharaoh, just imagine any tyrant, any recent tyrant, is he dead? That, it's that, like, could he? <laughs> like, could he have died actually? So some of them did not believe that he actually could be dead. And he's done. And he's gone. It's like a nightmare, right? And you always, you know, think that it's never going to go away. So Musa prayed to Allah Azza wa Jal and he brought the body of Pharaoh out so that they could see and verify with their own eyes that this is how Allah saved you. Pharaoh, that king that you thought no one can defeat, he is now a dead body in front of you. So this is nunajika bi badanika litakuna liman khalfaka ayah. Rasulullah says in the hadith that is authentic, he says, لَمَّا أَغْرَقَ اللَّهُ فِرْعَوْنُ When Allah drowned Pharaoh, and he says, آمَنْتُ He says, I believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. قَالَ جِبْرِيل Jibreel said, قَالَ يَا مُحَمَّدُ لَوْ رَأَيْتَنِي He says, O oh Muhammad, if you could just see me then. وَأَنَا أَخُذُ مِنْ حَالِ الْبَحْرِ فَأَدُسُّهُ فِي فِيهِ مَخَافَةَ أَن تُدْرِكَهُ الرَّحْمَةِ He says, if you could see me then. At that moment when he is saying this statement and I'm taking from the mud of the sea and stuffing it in his mouth out of fear of Allah's mercy that it will actually reach him. 
So this first tells you how angry was Jibreel alayhi salam with Pharaoh. Right? Right? So it's not only Musa. Like, just think about it. It's an angel of Allah azza wa but it means that he has seen so much from him. So much from him. That is, he had no place, nothing, no mercy left for Pharaoh at all. Right? And this is something, subhanAllah, I mean, you could slightly relate with when you see tyrants living today and how much they have, that they have done, and you think to yourself, subhanAllah, you know, they should just go away. They just should go away. That's the same feeling. But also in that hadith, it tells you about something, which is the great mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. That who knows Allah Azza wa Jal more than among the angels Jibreel? No one. And what was he afraid of? He says, I was afraid that he will say that statement, La ilaha illallah, and I know how merciful Allah is and how much he loves to pardon people, that even this guy will be pardoned. And I don't want him to be pardoned. So I'm just stuffing it in his mouth that, you know, he will not be able to utter la ilaha illallah. Of course, if it was sincere from his heart, if it was in the right time, it doesn't matter if you had mud in your mouth or not. Allah will accept it. But it's just that he was trying to do what he can to stop it because he does not deserve it. And he definitely did not deserve it because... He delayed Iman, Iman till that time where it was not suitable at all for Iman to be given. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, يُنصرون. He says, we have made them, meaning Pharaoh and his people, we made them examples, leaders that call people to hellfire. Now, whenever you think of who is an example of evil, you think of Pharaoh. So he, be, he will be among the people leading others to hellfire. He's an example. He's a model. If a person wants to be a tyrant, study Pharaoh. If you want to defeat tyrants, study the life of Pharaoh and what Musa alayhi salam did with him. So Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمَا إِمَّةَ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى النَّارِ So a person could be an imam that calls to heaven or an imam. Fir'aun was an imam or not? By the statement of Allah, he was an imam. But an imam calling to what? Hellfire, to Allah's anger. And on the day of judgment, they will not be championed. And in this life, we have given them a curse. And on the day of judgment, they will be of the people who will be punished. So this is the destruction of Pharaoh and how Allah Azza wa Jal had saved Banu Israel. And something significant happened. Like that, why, why I said... Musa alayhi salam was a turning point in human history. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and this hadith is, is sahih, مَا أَهْلَكَ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا وَلَا قَرْنًا وَلَا أُمَّةً وَلَا أَهْلِ قَرْيَةٍ مُنْذُ أَنْزَلَ التَّوْرَاةَ عَلَى وَجْهِ الْأَرْضِ بِعَذَابٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ غَيْرَ أَهْلِ الْقَرْيَةِ الَّتِي مُسِخَتْ قِرَدَةً أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَهْلَكْنَا الْقُرُونَ الْأُولَى بَصَائِرَ لِلنَّاسِ He says Allah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says Allah azza wa jal did not destroy a people or a generation or a nation or a people of a village from the time that he had revealed the Torah on the face of this earth with a punishment that comes from the sky except the people of the town or the village that Allah turned into monkeys don't you see that Allah azza wa jal says وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابِ we had given Musa the book مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَهْلَكْنَا الْقُرُونَ الْأُولَى after we have destroyed the previous nations بَصَائِرَ لِلنَّاسِ meaning that this book the Torah is guidance to humanity so you know what that hadith is saying meaning that after Fir'aun and the destruction of Fir'aun Fir'aun's punishment came from whom? Allah Azza wa Jal meaning humanity had no power in it Allah is the one who destroyed them and destroyed his people. He said, from after Pharaoh onward till today, Allah never sent a punishment on a people from the sky to include all of them. One exception was that city that turned into monkeys because they disobeyed Allah Azza wa Jal. But afterwards, Allah did not send a punishment from the sky like the people of Ad, the people of Thamud, right? the people of Nuh. Allah did not send that from the time of Musa, from the time of the Torah till today. But rather what Allah Azza wa would ask is that he had legislated jihad from that time. From the time of Musa when the Torah comes with its laws, jihad is legislated. So then he would command humans to do this task. So if there were to be punishment for other humans for a sin or disobedience or disbelief that they are doing, 
Allah is not going to send a punishment from the sky. But instead, what is there? Jihad in Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, that is, humans carry weapons for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yani legitimate jihad I'm talking about, right? With an imam and all of that. So they carry weapons for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal and they wage jihad against the enemies of Allah and that will be their punishment. But there is no punishment that is coming down from the sky uh, to, uh, on, upon a people to include all of them. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about what happened to them after they cross that water, after they are saved. Allah says, وَجَاوَزْنَا بِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْبَحْرَ فَأَتَوْا عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ يَعْكُفُونَ عَلَىٰ أَصْنَامٍ لَهُمْ He says, we got Banu Israel out of the water, out of the sea. فَأَتَوْا عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ They passed by a people, now they're on their journey. Where are they heading, by the way? Huh? Philistine, right? They're heading back to Philistine. That's the land that they're supposed to settle and to possess and rule. On their way, they passed by a people that they were worshipping idols of theirs. Ya'kufuna meaning that they are sitting and worshipping and dedicated in the worship of those idols. قالوا, ya Musa, they say, Ya Musa, make, grant us or give us an ilah like the ilah that they have. So they had idols and these people were worshipping idols. So they passed by and they said, Ya Musa, Give us idols like those people have idols. He says, you are people deep in ignorance. Not just ignorant, you are deep in ignorance. Meaning that these, what they are doing, is completely falsehood and will perish and it's destructive. How could you ask especially that? What have you just seen? What did you just see? What did you just see that Allah saved you? And now you're asking for idols to be worshipped. You want them to be gods instead of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Didn't Allah just save you from Pharaoh and his people? So this tells you, subhanAllah, that one, you know, um, ignorance of humanity in general. That you could see something so miraculous, so strong. Allah Azza wa Jalla intervened and yet the heart still is inclined to associate partners with Allah Azza wa Jalla. And the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he referred back to this incident. He says, once they were on a journey with some of the Sahaba, and then not the senior Sahaba, the ones who have been with him all the time, they did not say this. But some of the world, those who have accepted Islam recently, they passed by Datu Anwat. Datu Anwat is a tree. That the non-believers, if they wanted anything fulfilled, they would go and write something or hang something there. It'd be blessed and their need will be fulfilled. You know, like today, for instance, they have these graves in some Muslim lands, and they tell you that, you know, if, if you're barren, if you don't have children, if you're sick, what are you supposed to do? You go and you write something, and you go there and you hang it, right? Either you give it to the custodian of that grave, or there will be fences and you will tie it to that fence. And that means that the person over there is gonna grant you or facilitate, whatever it is. Grant you your request, save you, whatever it is. That's the same thing. So the, when they asked, he said, they are Rasulullah, these, the non-believers, they have this datu anwat, to bless them, to grant them. Grant us also a datu anwat. Then he says, Allahu Akbar, innaha sunan. He says, oh Allahu Akbar, these are the patterns. You are saying exactly like the people of Musa had said to Musa, Grant us a ilah like the ilah that they have. You're going to follow the pattern of those who came before you. Meaning that this is shirk in Allah and this is haram. And just because you saw some other people doing it, you're going to follow them just because of that. Oh, you're following the pattern of nations. That is when they are weak in front of shirk. So this is what happened here with the uh, pe uh, people, Banu Israel. They saw people worshipping an idol and they said, we also want to worship an idol. And then it was then appointment or an appointment for Musa alayhi salam to receive one of the greatest books. In fact, up until that time, the greatest book to be revealed to humanity, which is a Torah, which will have laws, which will organize a society, 
which will tell them how to live, will build a nation. This has not, been, has not happened before. Huh? And that's why the Torah was so important. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَوَعَدْنَا مُوسَى ثَلَاثِينَ لَيْلَةً وَأَتْمَمْنَاهَا بِعَشْرٍ فَتَمَّ مِيقَاتُ رَبِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَةً He says, we promised Musa, or we asked him to, for an appointment. 30 days. And after the 30 days, 10 additional. And so, they've come to 40 days. 40 days where Musa alayhi salam would be worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. And these 40 days could be 40 days where he stayed with Banu Israel, worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. And then when they were done, he headed uh, to meet with Allah or to speak to Allah Azza wa Jal alone and receive the Torah. Or those were 40 days where Musa would actually part, leave Banu Israel behind, and then go and continue to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And after the 40 days have ended, after he had you know, worshipped Allah for that long, then he'll be ready to receive the Torah, and then Banu Israel are also supposed to join him. Supposed to join him. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal says in the other ayah, وَمَا أَعْجَلَكَ عَنْ قَوْمِكَ يَا مُوسَى He says, Musa, what, what, why, are you, what, why, are you, why, why are you hasty? Or why did you come in haste? Why did you rush? And come here. ما أعجلك عن قومك يا موسى. Why did you rush before your people, يا موسى? قال هم على أثري وعجلت إليك ربي لترضى. He said, Ya Allah, they're right behind. على أثري, they're right behind me. وعجلت and I rushed to you, Ya Allah, so that you'd be happy with me. So this is what happened, meaning that there's a period of, let's call it purification, of ibadah for Musa alayhi salam. He heads to talk to Allah to receive the Torah. Banu Israel are supposed to follow right after Musa. Now, وَقَالَ مُوسَى لِأَخِيهِ هَارُونَ إِخْلُفْنِي فِي قَوْمِي وَأَصْلِحْ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ So Musa alayhi salam leaves Banu Israel behind. And who, he put, who does he put in charge? Ha, Harun. Ikhlufni fi qawmi, meaning take charge of them, lead them, wa aslih and reform, wa la tattabi' sabil al mufsidin, do not follow the path of the corruptors, meaning follow the straight path. So you lead them, you lead them in my absence. وَلَمَّا جَاءَ مُوسَى لِمِيقَاتِنَا وَكَلَّمَهُ رَبُّهُ So he says, when Musa came for that appointment, and Allah spoke to him, and Musa alayhi salam, by the way, he was favored from among the prophets of Allah azza wa jal, is that Allah would directly talk to him. So, كَلَّمَهُ قَالَ رَبِّ أَرِنِي أَنظُرْ إِلَيْكَ He says, Ya Allah, let me look at you. Right? Let me look at you. So, what, was, what is the thing that moved Musa alayhi salam to ask that? His love for Allah azza wa jal. And also for him to be granted something as great as this, so I can hear him. I can hear him. But now, Ya Allah, let me just see you. And so Allah says, Qala lan tarani. He says, you will not see me. Meaning that you cannot see me. And it doesn't mean here that you will not see me forever and ever and ever. No, in the day of judgment, will we see Allah? In Jannah, we will see Allah. So it's lan tarani, meaning you will not see me until then. So, but it doesn't say here until then. The sunnah says until then. Lan tarani. He says, you will not see me. Why? Because your body, I'm just explaining to you and then I'm going to come back to it. Because your body can't take it. Then tarani. وَلَكِنْ انظُرْ إِلَى الْجَبَلْ But look at the mountain. فَإِنِ اسْتَقَرَّ مَكَانَهُ فَسَوْفَ تَرَانِي If it stays in its place, then you will be able to see me. That is, Allah Azza wa wanted to show Musa, not simply say you cannot and that is it. He wanted to show Musa alayhi salam that in reality, there would be no possible way for you to be able to see me while you possess such a body, such a weak body. Allah did not create you to be able to handle Allah Azza wa Jal then, to the side of Allah. So he says, he wants Allah to show it to him. فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّ رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ جَعَلَهُ دَكَّةً So when Allah Azza wa Jal manifested to the mountain, جَعَلَهُ دَكَّةً That mountain turned into rubble, into dust, into sand. وَخَرَّ مُوسَى صَعِقًا And Musa, when he saw that scene, he fell unconscious. Huh? So there's a hadith from the Prophet wasallam that says that when Allah Azza wa manifested himself to the mountain, his Rasulullah wasallam put his thumb into his smallest finger and he said like this. 
right? This is just like this. And Allah Azza wa Jal is great beyond anything that you can imagine. But He says just uh, the only part of, yani just a small part. This is it. That actually was was you know uh, was the mountain was allowed to see from Allah Azza wa Jal was it was this, and that destroyed it completely. So then Musa alayhi salam fell unconscious. فلما أفاق قال سبحانك تبت إليك وأنا أول المؤمنين. so when he regained consciousness, he says سبحانك glory be to you, meaning that I now realize. تبت إليك I repent to you. I realize that this is not something I should have asked. I could have asked. It's not possible for me. وأنا أول المؤمنين and I am the first believer in you, ya Allah azza wa meaning in among His people or the person who is rushing to believe in Allah azza wa jal. Then Allah says to Musa. إِنِّي اسْتَفَيْتُكَ عَلَى النَّاسِ He says, I've selected you from among people and favored you with رِسَالَاتِي with my messages and with talking to you directly. فَخُذْ مَا أَتَيْتُكَ وَكُنْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ So take what I've given you and be among, from among the thankful. Meaning that Allah is reminding Musa alayhi salam, yes, you were not granted this, but remember all the great things that I've given you. And that's a good thing, inshallah, also to use at, at, in, in, whenever you want to comfort someone. Whether they ask you for something and you say, I can't give you this, but I can give you that. Or as someone loses something and you say, don't look at what you've lost. Look at all the great things that you have. So Allah Azza wa says to Musa, yes, you cannot have this, but look at the great, many other great things that I have given you. So thank them, focus on them, and you will be getting more and more and more. So then Allah Azza wa says, وكتبنا له في الألواح من كل شيء موعظة وتفصيلا لكل شيء فخذها بقوة وأمر قومك يأخذ بأحسنها. He says and we have written for him in the tablets. What are we talking about here? The Torah, right? We we're talking about the Torah. We've written for him in the tablets. من كل شيء. That is everything that they will need. They will find in it موعظة a reminder وتفصيلا a details of everything. فخذها بقوة. So take it seriously. Huh? Hold it with strength. And this is what a person is supposed to be with the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't take it, you know, with, with a 50% attitude. Maybe I'll take it, maybe not. I'll check what's in it and maybe... No, khudha bi quwa, be committed to it. Because when you have that intention, then you'll be able to handle it. You'll be able to carry it and Allah will assist you. فَخُذْهَا bi quwa. وَأْمُرْ قَوْمَكَ يَأْخُذُ بِأَحْسَنِهَا And ask your people, command them to take the best that is in it. And what does it mean here to take the best that is in it? It doesn't mean that what's in it is bad and good, so take the uh, best. It means that there is good and better. So as also your intention should be that in the book of Allah, in the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, take the best of the best. That is, you can punish someone or forgive them. What is best? So Allah Azza wa say, take the best. That you should be your intention and your goal. If you cannot, then move to the lower level. But your intention should be take the best. Be ahsaniha. Huh? I, this is recommended. It doesn't mean if it's recommended, I'm not going to do it. No, if you're going to take the best, do it because it's recommended. If you cannot, then that's different. So be ahsaniha. سَأُرِيكُمْ دَارَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Then Allah Azza wa talks about, uh, there's some uh, other intervening ayat. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَاتَّخَذَ قَوْمُ مُوسَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ مِنْ حُلِيِّهِمْ عِجْلًا جَسَدًا لَهُ خُوَارٍ The people of Musa, when Musa left, they've taken from حُلِيِّهِمْ from the jewelry that they had, عِجْلًا جَسَدًا A calf, a lifeless calf. Jasada it means that it's a body, but it has no soul to it. Ijlan jasadan lahu khuwar. It's making a sound. So it makes a sound, but it's lifeless. It has no life in it. Alam yaraw annahu la yukallimuhum la wala ma wala yahdihim sabila ittakhaduhu wa kanu zalimin. Don't they know that it does not speak to them and does not guide them? And Allah Azza wa Jal talks about this in another uh, surah where he says that Allah is informing Musa alayhi salam. So Musa knew about this before he went back to Banu Israel. He says, we have sent a fitna to your people. 
and they were not patient enough. Uh, they were not patient enough, so they've accepted it. So they were sent a fitna, but they accepted that fitna. And they were misguided by a Samiri. So Musa came back to his people full of anger, really angry. Ghadbana Asifa is really angry. He says, didn't Allah Azza wa Jal, when he met his people, he says, didn't Allah Azza wa Jal promise you a good promise? Has it been too long? Meaning, like, did I leave you for such a long time that you would actually start worshipping that calf, that statue, instead of Allah Azza wa Jal? Or did you want Allah to punish you? And that's why, you know, you did not wait for me. Huh? Or you did not keep my promise, the promise that you've given me. That you did not keep the promise that you've given to me, that you will stay upon the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is their excuse now. He says, we had no power. Uh, we had no choice in the issue. Meaning that's their apology. It says, but what happened is that we had jewelry from Zinat al Qawm, from the Pharaoh and his people. We were carrying jewelry from them. Huh? And they had said that these, this was jewelry that they was, was kept with them or they borrowed from them. Anyway, they had jewelry from Pharaoh and his people. We threw it in a pit. فَكَذَلِكَ الْقَسَّامِرِ The Samiri also threw something there. فَأَخْرَجَ لَهُمْ عِجْلًا جَسَدًا لَهُ خُوَارٍ So he brought out a Samiri to them, عِجْلًا jasada, A calf that is body of a calf, lifeless as we said, but it has and it makes a sound. فَقَالَ هَذَا رَبُّكُمْ هَذَا إِلَهُكُمْ وَإِلَهُ مُوسَى فَنَسِي so when he brought it out, he said, this is your ilah and the ilah of Musa. Musa forgot about him. Meaning Musa went far away to look for him and talk to him. No, 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 this is him. This is the ilah of Musa. But he forgot that he was here or forgot that this is his ilah. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, don't they see that, he, that that thing does not talk to them? وَلَا يَمْلِكُ لَهُمْ ضَرَّ وَلَا نَفْعَ Cannot harm them, cannot benefit them. وَلَقَدْ قَالَ لَهُمْ هَارُونُ مِنْ قَبْلِ And Harun had told them before, meaning before Musa came. يَا قَوْمِ إِنَّمَا فُتِنْتُمْ بِهِ He says, O oh, my people, you know, this is a fitna for you. And you're accepting this fitna. And your Rabb is Ar-Rahman, so follow me and obey me. قَالُوا لَنْ نَبْرَحَ عَلَيْهِ عَاكِفِينَ حَتَّى يَرْجِعَ إِلَيْنَا مُوسَى He says, we're going to continue to worship him. Worship it until Musa comes back. Meaning that, did Harun intervene? Did he give him advice? Yes, he did. Did they listen to him? No. No. And as it says, when he's going to defend himself, in al He said, the people saw me weak. Musa, uh, Harun was gentle. Right? Musa was strong. So he said, they saw me weak and they were about to kill me. Meaning there's nothing else I could do. Huh? I told them and I told them and I spoke to them. قَالَ يَا هَارُونُ مَا مَنَعَكَ إِذْ رَأَيْتَهُمْ ضَلُّوا أَلَّا تَتَّبِعَنِي أَفَعَصَيْتَ أَمْرِي قَالَ يَا ابْنَ أُمَّ لَا تَأْخُذْ بِلِحْيَتِي وَلَا بِرَأْسِي So Musa alayhi salam, no, before he knows, right? Before even asking Harun, this is how angry he was. What did he do? He said he held Harun. Both, you know, he grabbed Harun with his hair and beard and dragged him to him. Right? And Harun is older, huh? but still. Musa alayhi salam was the stronger one. So he held Harun with his hair, grabbed him with the hair of his head and his beard, and he pulled him to him. And he said, Harun, what stopped you? If you saw them misguided like this, that you do not follow me. And come and tell me. Afa'asayta amri, did you disobey what I told you? That, you know, walk the straight path, do this and do this. He says, oh, son of my mother. And why did he say son of my mother? Well, he's son of his father as well too. But why son of my mother? He says, so that he can soften his heart a little bit. So he says, son of my mother, you know, do not take my, do not hold me by my hair and my, my beard. Inni khashitu, I was afraid that he will say that I've divided Banu Israel 
and that you did not follow my direction and my advice. What, is it, what does he mean? Meaning that if I were to follow you, what will happen? First, I won't be able to lead them anymore. And then those who did not worship that calf are going to follow me. And the others will stay behind. So I'm going to split Banu Israel. So I was afraid that I'm going to split them and you will come and say you've split Banu Israel and you did not follow my advice. And let me see, he has also says something else here. Naam. And he says, إِنَّ الْقَوْمَ اسْتَضْعَفُونِي They saw me meek, وَكَادُوا يَقْتُلُونَنِي And they were about to kill me. فَلَا تُشْمِتْ بِيَ الْأَعْدَاءِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْنِي مَعَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ He says, so don't make my enemies happy with what is happening to me. لَا تُشْمِتْ بِيَ الْأَعْدَاءِ And do not, you know, you know, conclude that I am with the unjust aggressors or worshipping other than Allah Azza wa I'm not one of them. And here, لَا تُشْمِتْ بِيَ الْأَعْدَاءِ Meaning that if my enemies see what is happening to me, they will be happy. So don't give them that happiness. And that is something that the Prophet ﷺ used to seek Allah's refuge from. مِنْ شَمَاتَةِ الْأَعْدَاءِ That my enemies will look at what is happening to me and they will be happy because of it. Because if this is something, you know, difficult on a person to look at his enemies and find that they are satisfied with my misery, satisfied with my problem. So Harun is saying, there will be enemies of mine, enemies of yours. If they see us fighting like this, they will be happy with it. I am not involved in it. Then Musa realized, قَالَ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِأَخِي وَأَدْخِلْنَا فِي رَحْمَتِكَ Ya Allah, يعني, Ya Allah, forgive me and my brother and grant us your mercy and you are of most merciful. Then Musa alayhi salam asks, As-Samiri. قَالَ فَمَا خَطْبُكَ يَا سَامِرِي What is this? Why have you done this, يَا سَامِرِي? قَالَ بَصُرْتُ بِمَا لَمْ يَبْصُرُ بِهِ فَقَبَضْتُ قَبْضَةً مِنْ أَثَرِ الرَّسُولِ فَنَبَثْتُهَا وَكَذَلِكَ سَوَّلَتْ لِي نَفْسِي He said, I saw what they did not see. And I took a trace from the trace of a Rasul, the messenger. It is said here that he's referring here to Jibreel عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ فَنَبَثْتُهَا So I threw that trace وَكَذَلِكَ سَوَّلَتْ لِي نَفْسِي And so myself told me to do it. It is said, wallahu a'lam, that as they were exiting the sea, uh, he got a glimpse, he saw Jibreel alayhi salam. And so his, his, his mind told him, take a trace of what Jibreel is stepping on, the sand. Take it. So he took it. And so when they were asked, when Banu Israel, whether he, maybe he suggested it, or they wanted to get rid of that, that jewelry, they threw it all inside. So his self told him, his mind told him, if you were to take this sand and throw it, that something will happen. Something, it will come alive. It will come alive. Something will happen. So they threw their jewelry. He went there and he fashioned from that jewelry a body. A calf body. And he threw that, and maybe, Allahu A'lam, maybe what he threw caused it to have a sound. Or maybe the way that he constructed it, and it had no effect at all. But anyway, there was something inside of him telling him that if you throw it, it will have a sound, or it will make a sound, and it will be something. So he did that. And he said, وَكَذَلِكَ So myself pushed me to do it, and I had a thought it will work, and something came out of it. And that is a fitna. That's a fitna for him and a fitna for Banu Israel. That sometimes a person could have a thought and that thought could be from, not from Allah, from the shaitan and actually could work. And the fact that it had worked, it does not mean from, that it's from Allah Azza wa Jal. You just look at the outcome. Is it pleasing to Allah or not? If it's displeasing to Allah, that's a whisper from the shaitan. So what he had had, either with self, you know, had told him to do this or it's a whisper from the shaitan. Qala, فَذْهَبْ فَإِنَّ لَكَ فِي الْحَيَاةِ أَن تَقُولَ لَا مِسَاسِ He says, go. Your punishment in this life is that you will say, don't touch. Don't touch. Meaning they say that as he had touched what he is not allowed to touch, uh, taking the trace from the messenger, meaning what? Jibreel alayhi salam. He took it and he was not allowed to take it and not allowed to use it. So he will not, no one will be able to touch him in this life. They, Wallahu a'lam, you know, meaning that some said, for instance, if anyone were to touch him, he would feel severe pain. So he couldn't be around anybody. La misas, don't touch me, don't touch me. Huh? Meaning he's in exile. Huh? 
And some have said, you know, this also means that Banu Israel were commanded never to talk to him, not to mingle with him, not, you know, to just push him away. So naturally he was pushed away and maybe he had a physical condition where no one could touch him and he couldn't touch anyone. And you will have an appointment that you will not miss, meaning when you meet Allah Azza wa for that punishment, for what you have done, causing people to disbelieve. And look to at your God that you were worshipping. We're going to burn it. Then we're going to turn it into ash and throw it into the sea. Meaning that uh, Musa alayhi salam did what? We're going to take this thing that is made of jewelry and been melted. We're going to burn it. Uh, um, then we're going to destroy it. And we're going to turn it into ash. And we're going to, or dust. And we're going to spray, uh, uh, throw it into the sea so that everybody sees that that thing that they're worshipping as Allah, as a God, is weak. And it's all now is nothing. So it's impossible for it to be a God. Allah Azza wa your Lord is Allah Azza wa Jal who had, there is no one but Him. Now, Allah Azza wa says to the people of Musa that, well, you have to repent from this. And Allah has to forgive you. And in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ إِنَّكُمْ ظَلَمْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ بِاتِّخَادِكُمُ الْعِجْلِ You have wronged yourself by worshipping that calf. فَتُوبُوا إِلَى بَارِئِكُمْ Then repent to your Lord. فَاقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ عِنْدَ بَأْ So kill yourselves. This is better for you with the one who had created you. And then he accepted your repentance. That is, it was not enough for them. And this is, you have to understand, you know, the extent of Allah's mercy with you now. That you can do anything and just ask Allah Azza wa for repentance and it would be done. Right? Then you may need to compensate someone depending on the offense. But for them, what was their repentance? They had to kill themselves. Now, not to kill themselves like this. They had to carry knives. They had to carry swords. And then... Just go on a spree of killing. Just go and kill anyone that you see in front of you. Now, some said, Allah Azza wa Jal sent darkness upon them so that they couldn't see who they're killing and they went on killing anyone who's right next to them. That would be their punishment. And others have said, no, there's no evidence of such darkness. Meaning in plain sight, they're carrying these weapons and anyone that they see in front of them from Banu Israel, their own people, it could be a relative, could be a son, could be a father. If he's in front of you, you would go and kill him. Until Allah Azza wa Jal decides, okay, stop, stop. As for those who have died, Allah had accepted their repentance. And of those who have killed, Allah accepted their repentance as well. And that was it. So this was the way that Allah Azza wa Jal had asked them to repent. And in general, on Banu Israel, their sharia was difficult. Their sharia was tough, was strict. And that strictness reflected their rebelliousness. That they were a rebellious nation. But with the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because they follow Allah and they are themselves merciful, they receive Allah's mercy. So this is it insha'Allah. Well, we didn't finish the story of Musa. We still have some left. But this is it for tonight insha'Allah. Bi'idhnillah we conclude the story of Musa alayhi salam. As I said, just as a reminder, two weeks of break. And inshallah, we'll be back the first week of January, inshallah, the first weekend. That'll be, I think it will be the fourth, if I'm not mistaken. So inshallah, yeah, if you have questions. Okay. I, was, I think you were stretching. No, no, he was just stretching, yeah. yeah.